again, my CC friends. It's Carrie Causey from Kenmore, Washington, uh, CC, and I am tutoring Challenge A in the fall. And I wanted to share, this is part two of the CC highlighting system that has been slightly adapted to make it a little bit more applicable to fiction. Um, so you can go back and look at part one where I describe all what's on this bookmark. In part one, we talked more heavily about pink and green and you should definitely use just pink and green for several chapters or until you feel comfortable with it. So don't worry about trying to add these other colors and trying to do all five at once while you're beginning using the system. It'll be a little overwhelming. You'll feel like you're not sure what to do. What does it should be? Should it be green? Should it be yellow? It actually doesn't matter whether it's green or yellow. If you highlight something in yellow, someone else might have highlighted it in green, and that doesn't matter at all. This is just to help you be able to quickly flip through your book to find important points, and it will actually help you remember the points if you underline them. That's one of the cool things about our brain and about memory work is that if you underline it or copy it, copying it is a little bit more effective, but we're not going to copy everything out of this book. But if you underline it, you and your brain has gone through several processes. You've read it the first time, um, you've decided it was important, and you have gone selected which kind of important it is. Is it a main point? Is it a supporting point? Is it so important that I want it to be in its blue color? You've had to make that deci decision. Then you've gone back and underlined it, which means you've read it a second, possibly a third time. And this all goes very, very fast, especially if you're underlining short sentences. But your brain has thought that thought three or four times before you move on. And so just the process of choosing a color and underlining will help you to remember whatever you're underlining. It's almost like magic. It's very helpful. So this second part video, I'm going to talk about using yellow, blue, and orange. Um, so I, as I talked about yesterday in the first video, the green is kind of like IEW main topics. Um, whatever the paragraph begins with, usually a sentence near the beginning will explain Explain um, either what the paragraph is about or what scene you're in in the story. You know, when they decided to go explore the house, Peter said, I'm going to explore the house, and we underlined that in green. And everything that followed after it was all about exploring the house. So exploring the house was your topic sentence or your topic idea or your theme of what's going on. So yellow um, is going to be like your sub points your, um, the things that are going to go inside your IEW paragraph um, that are all part of whatever you underlined in green. So I'm going to flip open and show you. I've only done the first couple of chapters so far. Um, let's see. Here's one. So here we did in green. Um, they had been exploring the house. Here we go. We're going to go explore the house. And then this whole section of um, action in the book, all the way down to the next screen, is all about exploring the house. But there are some important details about exploring the house. Here's a detail about the house. It was the sort of house that you never come to the end of. And then they describe lots of rooms they saw. None of these rooms in themselves is very important. Um, but here's an important thing. Shortly after they went into a room that was quite empty, except for one big wardrobe. And we all know that the wardrobe is going to be a key player. So when they went to explore the house, the two most important points were the house went on forever and they got to a wardrobe room. room. Then the action changed. They're not just exploring the house anymore. Now we find out that Lucy stayed behind to look in the wardrobe. Ding, ding, ding. Brand new thing. And we're going to need details about this new piece of action that's happening. So that's green. Okay, so now everything that's coming is all about staying at the wardrobe. She saw several coats. Great, there's details about the coats, but we wouldn't necessarily keyword outline those. Um, maybe you would want to highlight some of them. Um, but I just want to know that at first she saw coats in the closet. And then, so here comes my blue. And the blue is for important quotes. They don't necessarily have to be important to everyone if they are interesting to you or important to you or you want to remember or be able to find them later to discuss, especially at class or with your parent teacher. So blue is for things that jump out at you like, wow, I just want to remember that. 
It's not necessarily a main point. It's not necessarily even a supporting point. I just want to remember that. So that's what blue is for. So there won't be very much blue. Probably not even one in each chapter. Maybe one in each chapter or two. But everything is not blue. And I highlighted this one in blue. She knew it is very foolish to shut oneself into any wardrobe. Now this is not something that we think about today because we don't really have locking wardrobes today. And so I thought it was a very interesting comment to be included that we wouldn't necessarily think of. But it's all still part of being in the wardrobe. So then I'm going to continue on with yellow. This wasn't a new topic. It was just a really cool point. Let's see. She took a step further in, expecting to feel woodwork, but could not feel it. So you'll see here, I didn't even highlight the whole sentence. I really just wanted the actual pieces of information that I might have tried to turn into an IEW picture if I was keyword outlining this. Um, I would make like a little foot for a step and a little arrow going forward and then maybe a little piece of wood and then a question mark because she couldn't feel it. So step further, expecting wood, didn't feel it. So I just put those little bits in yellow so that I can skim this page and know what the whole page is about by starting with coats and ending with expecting to feel. I know that she hasn't quite got to the back yet. Let's see. More, 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 more wardrobe, wardrobe, wardrobe. Here's a new piece of action. She noticed something new under her feet. So we know as the reader, because we know this story, that she's about to transition to the outside of the wardrobe. But now there's new things under her feet to feel. Mm, let's see, soft, powdery, and cold. We know she's getting to the snow. Just like the branches of the trees, she says. And then she sees light. All of these are part of the new change in the wardrobe that we started in green. Change in the wardrobe, change in the wardrobe, change in the wardrobe. And at the end, she's in the wood at nighttime with snow and snowflakes. And then we have new action again a little frightened and excited. And then we move on to meeting Mr. Tumnus and all that. So that's how yellow works. If you've found a new piece of action, but there's a few important points in the action, I do those in yellow. So if I'm skimming my book, I can look for my greens until I find the section I want, and then I can pop down inside this green section and hopefully find the detail that I'm looking for. And then I found another she had left the door open for she knew it was a silly thing to shut yourself into the wardrobe. They said it twice. And that's so silly to us. And I want to talk about that in class because I found that. And I just I just think that's great. Um, the only other thing on this bookmark um, with the highlighting system is orange. And I actually have not pulled any out yet. I don't know if it's because I've missed some or if um, C.S. Lewis hasn't used a lot of metaphor in the first two chapters of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But this is basically uh, your stylistic techniques, which in IEW would be your dress-ups um, or your advanced additions. So if you see a metaphor, or if you see a simile, parallels, alliterations, things like that that the author puts in to either make a point or to draw a parallel, you know, if the if the snow was as soft and powdery as a powder puff or something like that, um, if you wanted to, you could put that in orange because then when you're in class and you're having your discussion, you could say, as soft as a powder puff, what did you guys think about that description? And going back to whatever you underlined in orange would be a fast and easy way to flip back through as you're having your discussion. And then down here are just some little margin markings. Again, these are very much like keyword outlines. I think I used one somewhere. Um, it's for if you want to highlight a whole section. Um, yeah, here's one. Um, all of this is kind of important. Um, he's describing how, Tumnus is describing how he's a kidnapper. And then he goes on to describe exactly what he has done to be a kidnapper. And I don't want to underline every single one of these lines in yellow. However, I also think that everything in this section is important. I don't want to just pull out two or three words. I want to remember that this whole section is really great and important to the story. So I just used um, a little bracket. You could have used a fancy bracket. Um, you could use any of these things. You could put a little star by this section. Um, you could put an exclamation point like, oh my goodness, look what's happening. Um, you could use any of these things you want, but mostly I use them when it's too long to really underline the whole thing. It would just be silly to underline it. So I use a little bracket or something on the side, and then I know to read the whole section and not just pull out single words. 
So again, that is it. This is um, the CC highlighting system with a few very minor tweaks to make it a little easier to flow when you are using it in a fiction book. So I hope this is helpful for you. Um, I will put a link to this PDF down in the notes. I haven't done very many YouTube videos, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that, but I will try to figure it out. So there you go, and I hope this is helpful for going through your literature in Challenge A. Uh, happy school year.